Telegram for Mr. Elmer, please. Call up the last minute one tickets. I gotta do this. Telegram, Mr. Elmer. Tickets, give me. I've done it. Take care of the back of the stage. Hello. Telephone, Mr. Elmer. Atlantic City. The boss may be sick, but he's not too sick to keep us on the job. I got it. Hello. Hello. Yes, Mr. Carroll. Yes, everything's all right. Listen, will you stop worrying? Listen, Mr. Carroll, your health is worth more than that. Oh, listen, Mr. Carroll, will you do me a favor? Will you take your arteries and go to bed and forget about the whole thing? Yeah, yeah, go back. Go back. Here, here. here. Put that stuff. Why don't you backstage, Mr. Carroll? Land and Ware haven't shown up yet. Here, here. Land and Ware haven't shown up. What am I supposed to do here? Go on and give their performances? Come just as Atlantic City calling. You cut them off. Listen, tell them I died. I, I can't be disturbed. Telegram from Mr. Ellery. No. All right, don't knock me down. All right, right here. 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 Four, six, and eight. Thank you, sir. Opening nine. Lieutenant Murder. I'm standing room of the homicide squad. Well, what's the matter? For oh, my ticket. I'm sorry, Commissioner. There's nothing for you. What? I'm sorry. Where's Jack Ellery? No, sir. He's just gone backstage. No, Only standing room. I'm sorry, sir. I have no reservation. Hey. Hey, you. Where's those tickets you were going to leave for me? Chief Bill, I forgot all about them. Yeah? Well, remember them now. I'm going to hustle over to the Astor to pick up Ethel. Oh, listen, I couldn't get a couple of tickets for the White House. Would you like to stand? What? With me all laid out like a funeral and a dame on my hands? What are you beefing about? I got a show on my hands. Say, that's nothing. I got Ethel on mine. I promised her. Well, I'm promised her. Judas H. Priest, here you belly ain't got about a couple of tickets, and I got a starring leading lady here that haven't shown up yet. Ah, uh, you can't get away with this. I promised Ethel. Well, tell her you can't show up. What's the matter? Are you afraid of that fluff? What, me? Me afraid of a dame? Hey, I'll tell a dame anything I want her. And push her in the mess if she lets out a peep. Ha! Well, what do you want from me? Go ahead. And... Hey, a swell pal you've turned out to be. When you were a cheap reporter batting in around the police headquarters, did I ever give you the runaround? Oh, go away. Where do you bother me? I'm a busy man here. All right. That washes us up. Just try and ask me for a favor sometime. No way! You're breaking my heart! Ah. Out, 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 out! Take you. it! Take it on the lamp! You take it! Out! Get out your big mallet head! Yeah. Outside! That's where it is. What uh, kind of a place is this opening night? Get in there and get your clothes off. Our people are so into Oh, Mr. Sure. Ellery! Hmm? Uh, uh, not now. Not now. <laughs> the way you sing that, Eric. Thank you, dear. But let's rush, darling. We've got to get to the theater. No, no, not yet, Anne, darling. You must play it once more. I must try my new, new lyrics once more. Come, just once. Come along. Be a good girl. Come along, dear. This is the happiest night of my life, Eric, and nothing, nothing can spoil it. Nothing, Anne, dear, nothing. But there's one thing I must tell you. No, no, you. no, there's only one thing you can tell me tonight, darling. Come along. Oh, 
Oh, Judas H. Priest, <laughs> listen, this is opening night. Will you get inside here? You're in here making taxi cab hocus pocus. Oh, this isn't hocus pocus. This is orange blossoms. You mean you're going to get married and all that stuff? We're going over to Jersey and wake up a minister after the show. Oh, gee, ain't that marvelous. Can you imagine buying all that from a minister for $10? <laughs> yeah, what a break for the show. Crooners make it real. Say, listen, I'll have it on the front page of every morning newspaper in the city. <laughs> Gee. Oh, but say, listen, in the meantime, would you mind coming inside and getting busy, please, just for me? Shall we? Let's. Oh, swear. Say, listen, though, have you got a date tonight? Say, listen, you two can't get married tonight. Why not? Well, wait till Sunday night. We'll get a better break in the Monday morning newspapers. I'm sorry, Jack. But we don't wait. We take off tonight, and I bet we find you crawling out of the minister's nightshirt with a couple of newsreel <laughs> cameramen. They want you out front, Mr. Ellery. Oh, that Carol's blood pressure's going up my long distance. Evening, Norma. Hello, Norma. Oh, Mr. Lander. I hope you're a wonderful success tonight, and that nothing... I mean, that everything... Thanks, Norma. I hope you like me. like you. Gosh. I beg your pardon. Oh. Well, how long did it take you to get a bottle of champagne? Or well, maybe I'm wrong. And you're the star of this opera, and I'm the hired girl. I'm sorry, Miss Rita. I, uh, I, I stopped to hear some gossip. Gossip? Huh? Spill it. Mr. Lander and Miss Ware are going to get married. Married? Why, he can't. Why not? He's got to get married sometime. He can't always play around. Married. And to that little... After what I've been to him. Oh, yeah? Well, after what I've done for him. Well, I brought him into the show. You brought him in? You and who else? Just me. Carol stole me in an act with him and brought him along. Listen, baby, blue singers like you are thicker on Broadway than brunettes in Africa. It was Lander Carroll wanted. He just brought you along to hold his hat for him. Is that the truth you're telling me, you broken down clown? Are you trying to ride me? I wouldn't joke about a thing like that, Miss Rita. Isn't it just beautiful and romantic? Oh! Well, get off the table. How can I put you sitting up there? I got dirt. She's got dirt. Old Carol Tillen got dirt. Did you? There's no good coal. It's raw. And is she burning? Lander and Ware are telling it to the minister tonight. Oh, yeah. really? At least that's a three alarm for all. You mean they're going to get married with the license and a ring and whatnot? What a funny thing to do. It tastes them like coffee. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. For you. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Lander. Good evening. Oh, isn't it splendid? They've been turning people away for half an hour. Well, that's grand. Here's your coat. Thank you, dear. Eric, Rita Ross, she is very angry. No, don't worry, darling. Oh, but this means so much, this Broadway opening. Wouldn't it be wise, perhaps, to make up with her just for a little while? Oh, I know, Rita. She'll put on an act. Perhaps for a tantrum or two. But she'll survive. Oh, I hope you're right. Well, of course I'm right. Nobody as happy as I am could be wrong. Prime Minister, over to Mr. Lander. Oh, and you are not even made up, Eric. I'll go. Come in. Just a gag, I guess. That ain't no gag. Don't be silly. Number coming up, Miss Ward. Huh? 
Oh, I don't think so. What's going on here? Somebody tried to drop a spotlight on me. Oh, go on. You've got open night nerves. Is anything wrong? I'm on the street. Come on, come on. Snap out of where. Don't get nothing like that yet. Nobody's going to hurt her. It's just probably some clumsy electrician up there with a handful of thumbs. And a while ago, somebody smashed my mirror. What? Yes, sir, Miss Ellery. Come on, I'll show you. Are you all right, dear? Yes, sir. Of course you are. Oh, I was so No, you're not. You must be. Come on, be all right now. Be all right now. I suppose it's a little wedding gift from Rita. Rita could pull the theater down on us. And we'd still climb out and go over to Jersey and get married. And any accidents that happen after tonight happen to Mr. and Mrs. Lander. You bet. Ah, that door blew shut. Gee, this theater's as drafty as Times Square. Listen, hear that? That's the overture. You're in the opening number. Come on. I'll be all right. Go on, then, dear. Go on. Give it a Hurry up, hurry up. Come down here and get on the stage. Just hurry, please. This is opening night. I'm only trying to put on a show. Come on, girl. Don't hurry up. Get on the stage. Get on the stage. Oh, will somebody go up there and tell those dumb clucks to be careful? Careful, my eye. This rope has been cut. Cut? Oh, well, honey, don't, don't let that upset you. Now, just go out there and slay him, huh? Consider him slayed. Adam. Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to present again with Mr. Carol's permission the latest edition of The Vanity. As we display this grand array of feminine charm and grace, we can see the same old question staring you in the face. Each year we hatch another batch of personalities, eyes and lips and hips and ankles dimpled on to knees, an endless supply of loveliness that never seems to cease. To you it's all a mystery that can't be solved by police. Jack Ellery backstage. Listen, give me the 47th Street Police Station right away, will it? The last thing she said over the phone was, you were going to take me to the opening of the Vanities. Now you want to shove me off on a cheap picture show. Nuts! Nuts? To you? Yeah, nuts to me. That's what my friend Jack Ellery did for me. Washed me out with a swell number just as I was getting places with her. Imagine her saying nuts to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is this funny? It's your pal Jack Ellery at the Vanities calling. Yeah? Yeah. Says he's having trouble backstage. Wants a couple of men. Tell him okay. Hang up. Okay. I'll take that call. And will I take that call? Broke me up with Ethel, did he? Maybe I can do some breaking too. Come on, boys. Oh, oh, good one. Hey, oh, boy, the vanities. Hey, you stay here. Maybe somebody will go silly tonight. I want a cup. Come on. Ah, oh, nuts. Glorified creatures. Did they post for billboards or photographers? Were they cigarette girls or stenographers? Did they hail from Bridgeport or Kalamazoo? How I wish I knew. 
me. From dashing, crashing mobs who hurry to their jobs upon a subway strap, the busy, dizzy places on the eastern map. there on your coat. The woman, she's in your dressing room waiting. Well, have we had any luck? I don't know this lady. Oh, that's quite all right. You can talk. Oh, please hurry. I got the thing she stole, and you were right. It was we, of us. Well, there's the stuff, and it was in her apartment.
good. Anything missing? I don't know yet, and I don't care. I've got what I wanted. So you're sure you got this Rita Ross stopped? What makes you doubt it? Oh, I was just looking through some papers in her desk, and uh, apparently she's written the Vienna Police Department. Here's their answer. You read it? No. I just closed my eyes, picked it up, and brought it along. You read it, you spy. You read it. If you tell a single word to anybody, I'll... Please. I'll, I warn you. Please, darling, please be calm. Oh, Eric, I told you not to let strangers meddle in your private affairs. Now this... Listen, lady. I mind my own business. Though I can see why you might be interested in this Viennese opera singer of 30 years ago. She won't say anything about them. Now they both know. Rita Ross and this woman. Listen, dear. I'm not worried about her. I'm going to see Rita right now. But Eric, you're on the stage in just a minute. This will only take a minute. I want to talk to you. You're not paying me. I've got some things to say and you're going to listen. Norma, will you get me something? Get you what, Mr. Lander? Just tell me. Anything at all. Anything at all, so long as it takes those tiny ears of yours out of here. Go on. You stole a photograph out of my apartment. I wouldn't say stole. I just happened to be looking through some stuff. We weren't kicking it in the cover, were you? What did you take it for? Just seemed to be a good idea at the time. The dame in that photograph must have been quite a bother to the boys in Vienna, 30 years ago. Why did you take it? Elsie Singer. And then Grand Opera, too. Why did you write to the Vienna police? <coughs> Nothing will come of that if you don't get out of step. I didn't tell them that Helene Smith, the wardrobe woman, was Elsie Singer. Rita, for 30 years a woman makes amends, suffers to keep herself and her child, and now... You look a lot like your mother, round the eyes. Yes, she is my mother. And she killed a guy in Vienna. He was a dirty, rotten... But he was a big shot. And the Vienna police are still looking for the woman that killed him. For Elsie Singer. Don't all those years of drudgery and sacrifice mean anything to you? How are you and Anne Ware getting along? I hear you're going to marry her. Yes, tonight, after the show. Fine. And when you read about your wedding on the front page, right next to it you'll find a piece about a Mrs. Helene Smith being pissed for murder. You won't do that. You like living too well. Do that to my you mother and I'll... That's good. Remember, you tell that story to anybody. And I'll see that you never tell anybody anything again. Judas H. Priest, the third number's dinner over. Will you get on that stage and break it up? I've never been... Please, just wait about 57 years and show me. Gone wrong, Helene. You want to argue with her now? For where the show's over, you'll have plenty of time. Just get on down here. Don't worry about Rita, my dear. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Another bit, and they'll be off. Okay, Jack. Okay. Okay. 
What are you keeping for me, Helene? Rita Ross. She knows about Vienna. She does, does she? I'll talk to her. Oh, I'll handle her. You'll do nothing of the sort. Ah, you've been very sweet and helpful. But this is something I've got to take care of myself. Whether you like it or not, I intend to help and at any cost. Homer! You're in the room. Here's your way. Oh, Mr. Ellery! Oh, not now, dear. What? Get on the stage. <laughs> not now, dear. Just smile for the customer. Say you ought to be grinning from ear to ear. Man, this beautiful girl's happen to have every newspaper man in town at the wedding. No, I'm afraid not, Jack. What? What? We'll have to postpone the wedding for a few days. Oh, oh there's your cue. Come on, get on, come on, come on. Get up there.
blockhead. So it's you. Yeah, me. I sent to the police station for a copper. Look what I get. I thought this was your night off. So it is. But I'd give up anything to do an old pal a favor. Especially after all the trouble you went to about those tickets. Oh, now listen, Bill. Now you know I... Ah, you can't square yourself. What are we here for? Somebody uh, disturbing your peace? Not mine, somebody else's. Uh-huh. Seems somebody around here is dropping sandbags on a leading lady's dome. Trying to cut her up with broken glass. Hey, boy. Go back to your bootleg. This legal stuff ain't agreeing with you. Listen, Mallethead, we got comedians in this show. They get paid to be funny. Hey, what do you want me to do? Make a pinch for folks? This turns his... Age, please. 30,000 cops in New York. I gotta pick out a big flat for the Romeo like you. Why don't you take your lamps off those dams and do a little police work, huh? This is police work. Them babies look like they got clues or something. I'll oh, be serious, will you, Bill? Somebody around here's committing murder, maybe. Maybe murder. Why don't you kind of peek around, little, huh? Sure, I'll peek around. Now, there's a baby over there that looks suspicious. An ought to be followed. Hmm. Don't get too close to her. She'll mistake you for King Kong. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Ellery. Huh? Oh, not now. Go away. Not now. Oh, You alone can bring my lover back to me Even though I know it's all a fantasy And then put me to sleep Sweet marijuana, marijuana What's that? Don't you know? Blood. Hey, what's the matter up there? It's blood. Ah, oh, you're crazy. That's pain. It's not blood. Why? There's a woman up there. Nobody up there. There is. Why? Why is the show going on out front? Hey, cover this place up. Ben, you stay with me. Okay, boss. How'd you get up there? Oh, what you know? Yeah, I know. Probably some day went up there and got dizzy and fainted. It's all right. Come with me, Phil. Come on, come on. Get this show going. Come on, we'll get down on the stage. If on. you guys want to fight out of short, you pay a little. Just keep watching. Come on. Yeah. Spot for a gal to pick out and sleep out of the dark. <laughs> what is this? What is it? Listen, they got good cops over there in Jersey. Now what's all right? What's all right? You don't know, huh? Maybe she's one of the flying Ginsburgs. Well, come on, pick her up. You gonna sit down there and get married to her? Yeah, she is dead. What? Judas H. Priest. Who is she, Jack? Well, I can't see her face, will I? Aha. Uh -huh. Mustn't touch until the medical officer says so. Now, who is she? I never saw her before. What do you mean? Don't you know everybody in your show? Yeah, I know everybody in the show, and that's the answer. She ain't in the show. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. No mouth burns. 
Funny place to pick for a bump off. Yeah. <clears throat> a million buildings here in New York. 365 nights in a year, but this dame's got to pick this night in this building to commit suicide. It isn't suicide. It's murder. You mean somebody chased her up here and shoved that stuff down her throat? No. Somebody pushed this into her heart. Well, I finished. You can take her away now. Yes. Murder. And my opening night. What do you do in a case like this? Give the people their money back? Oh, hey, Bill, you're not gonna close the show. Oh, no. I'm gonna parade the body and give 10 cents I had to see it. Oh, listen, Bill, you can't do that. Don't you understand? The boss is sick of Atlantic City, and this is my big chance. Asking me for a favor now, aren't you? Yes, Bill, I am asking you for a favor. Listen, well, please don't close the show. Nothing doing. Pull your show. Listen, if it wasn't for me, you'd still be pounding those papers. Was it my paper that went to bat for you when the commission broke Drake and McGinley, huh? Yeah, and tonight you pencil me out of my day. Go and make your announcement. The party's over. Oh, let's now get you 50 days, but don't break me, will you? Who owns this doodad? I wouldn't know. Sure, you wouldn't know. Know anybody around here who would? Well, a wardrobe woman might. Well, let's go and see the wardrobe woman. Okay. But first, call off your show. Oh, what are you going to do? Go down and make an announcement, I suppose, huh? Will the killer please step forward? Listen, Bill. Let the killer think. See that nobody's wise. Then you can stand down and watch who's who. Now, sure. Can you imagine? If you went down below there, see, with the report in one hand, the killer in the other, well, you'd come out of the police station a captain. Just imagine that. Captain Murdoch. Doesn't it just roll off your tongue? Captain Murdoch. I well, say, those two words go together like bacon and eggs. Sure. Maybe I'll investigate this murder to music for a while. Now you're talking, Bill. Come on down here. You can watch everything from here. Come on. What's wrong? It's all right, darling. I... I think she's just fainted. You run along upstairs. Run along. Now, come on, come on, get back, everybody, will you? There's nothing wrong. Go on, get back, will you? Listen, boys and girls, will you listen to me? There's nothing wrong here. This lady just went upstairs and got dizzy and fainted, see? So now make, make your changes for the second act. And, and if you don't, because I'm, I'm going to rehearse you all day Sunday and I'm going to fire you. Now, go on, move along now. Oh, oh, get this oh, get this oh, get it, oh, Now, sir. Oh, oh, hey, some girls can bring out the way. Come on, come on. Look at it. Eight minutes, please. Hurry. Come on, you only have eight minutes for your change. Down the stairs. Come on. Down the dressing room. Come on. Down the dressing room. Come on. You can't come in here. There are girls. We can go anywhere. You the wardrobe woman? Yes. Well, do you recognize that? No. Yes. Who's been wearing it? Rita Ross. That's all. Well, Venus, where have you been? That was... There was a girl fainted. Well, what of it? Are you working for her? I'm sorry. Oh, go away. Hey, Rita, come here a minute, will you? There's a fellow out here who used to go to school with you. So catching it somewhere. I never went to school. Come on, girls. Snap into it. Rita, this is Lieutenant Murdoch from the police headquarters. What have I done? Parked in front of a fire plug? You ever seen this before? I wouldn't be surprised. Yours? Could be. I don't care if it could or it couldn't, is it? I usually wear one like that with this costume. So what? So this. I is she dead? Yes. Somebody pushed this pin through her heart. Oh, how horrible. Do you know this dame? No. No, pardon me for asking. Of course you don't. There's a hundred people back at the stage here. Nobody's ever seen her before. I saw her. Well, why didn't you say so? You asked me if I knew. I don't. I see a thousand people a day, I don't know. Go on, go on. Where did you see her? About a half an hour ago, coming out of the wardrobe room. Wardrobe? Wardrobe? Wardrobe. Right. Oh, wait! 
Get the wardrobe woman. Right. And? And Mrs. Smith and that girl had some kind of a row. Oh, they did, did they? Yes. And Mrs. Smith has a duplicate of that pin. Or did. Mm. Where's your pin? Right here. Okay. Here's the water room, Bill. Mrs. Smith. Have you any more of these toys? Things like that are always carried in duplicate. Well, turn it up. It's gone. Oh, it's gone, eh? Yes. I looked after you asked for it. Yeah. I had an idea. Uh, a little birdie peep that you might not find it there. You can't go Take your hands off of me, Menial. Who are you, and why are you addressing this lady like that? I'm police, Lieutenant Murdoch. And who are you? Mr. Boothby, he's with the show. Oh. Hmm. The man of the flying trapeze, eh? Sir, I have played with Majeska and Mantell. Ah, that's their grudge, not mine. Now keep out of here. I don't care who you are. I demand that you cease the absurdity of questioning this fine woman. Listen, Hamlet. Ever hear of a little thing like interfering with justice? Justice? Oh, justice, what stupidities are committed in thy name? Scram out of here, or I'll have you committed. Please, Come no, on, no, 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 I'm quite all right. I'm quite all right. Alan. Why did you kill that dame? I didn't. I never saw her before. <laughs> Is this the woman you heard having a row with this dame? Yes, and a hot one. It's a lie. It's the truth. And I'll take my oath on it in court. Well, you had a row with her. The pin is missing. Now, what does that add up? I guess that's all you want of me. I've got to change for the last act. <laughs> Maybe there won't be any last act. I'll be seeing you. It's not far from the body. Private Dick, eh? You got a guy in this troop with the name of Lander? He's the leading man. Ben, leave the leading man of this troop of trained seals here, will you? Oh, but Mr. Lander couldn't have anything to do with this terrible business. Ain't that sweet of you? Say, Bill, here's Lander. But listen, he's got to go off at the opening of the second act. Are you Lander? Yes. Do you know this woman? Yes. Do my ears deceive me, or am I at last hearing a yes? Who is she? Her name's Sadie Evans. She was a private detective. Uh-huh. Now we're climbing. Say, listen, Bill, my intermission's half over. Now, what was your business with Alanda? Some things were stolen from my apartment, and I hired her to recover them. Well, why didn't you notify the police? Notify the police. You want to get his stuff back. <laughs> now, the stolen things, what were they? Oh, purely a private matter. Well, there ain't no private matters when I'm prying into a murder case. Now, come on, cop up. My private affairs haven't any connection with the death of this woman. Oh, have a heart, will you? Another minute and it'll be too late for the opening of the second act. Now, quit stalling. Oh, stalling. Everybody don't want their private affairs spilled all over the carpet. Hey, this is a murder investigation. Yeah? How'd you like to go out and blabber to everybody about you and Ruby sliding down that fire escape, huh? What do you think, this is a blackout? <laughs> all right, well, we'll put aside the private affairs for a minute, see? Uh, hmm. Now then. Did you see this girl talking to this woman, Mrs. Smith? Uh-oh. I see. Gonna make sure about telling the same story, eh? Lady, you better walk. 
Well, I talked to this man Lander alone. Oh, gee, Billy's got to sing. Well, let him sing to me. Now, come on, lad. Let's play truth. Either you or Mrs. Smith is lying. But I don't know who's lying for who. But it won't be long now. Listen, will you listen to me? This place is sealed as tight as a drum. Why ruin my show and spoil this guy's chances, huh? <laughs> Come on, you dames, on the stage. Come on, get away. Hey, second man. What are you yelling at? Come on, get out of there. That someone threw that at me. A token of affection, I take it. Now, you wouldn't know who that belonged to, would you? No, I... I haven't the slightest idea. Mr. Policeman, that's half of this woman's scissors. Where's the other half? I don't know. You sure are the most not knowingest woman I've ever run into. She killed that girl and she just tried to kill me. What are you doing? Waiting for her to drive past a red light so you get arrested? Do keep your mouth shut. Don't you tell me what oh, they're doing. Oh, Rita, don't start an argument. Come on, get on the stage, will you? Lieutenant, either Mrs. Smith killed that woman or Mr. Lander did. me up after this number. Now blow the lid off the whole business. Tata, I'll see you in the chair. How long does the next number take, Jack? About four minutes. Oh. Well, I don't mind watching the girls for four minutes, considering I'm going to arrest a murderer right after. Turn into reality. All right, Booby, there's your cue. Okay, light. So are you, darling.
eyes. It's got that beat that drops me heat. They shake until they make the old thermometer rise. Oh, Lord, yes, they have bandanas. They go to market singing dirty hosannas. Why, you do that ebony rhapsody. Give me that prop machine gun. Careful, Mr. Boothby. The safety's on. You are. Where's my drink? Miss Rita, really, you oughtn't. It's dirty. Tell me what I do. You ought to know. What are you trying to do to the girl? Nothing of what I'm going to do to you after this number. Now you get out of here. You're fired. After this number, she'll wreck Eric and me. So take it in your stride like real troopers, would it? There's over 2,000 people out front that have paid a lot of money to come and see this show. And they're entitled to everything we can give them. Don't you understand? So now kind of settle down and give them the works, would it? Make your changes now. Oh, 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 Dead, all right. Dead? Yeah. She was going to blow the lid off, and now she's dead. Does that add up anything? 
hopeless that might end up to making you look ridiculous if you're not careful. Yeah? Well, it's simple. Mrs. Smith or Lander did it? Oh, Lander wouldn't do that, I know. Yeah, you know. She had to be shut up and somebody shut her up pretty. And it was your wardrobe woman or your tenor. Wait a minute, it could have been the machine gun. Did you ever stop to figure that somebody could have, could have stuck a bullet in there with those blanks? Oh, listen, Sam. How could one bullet out of 300 in a certain day just wait at Kroger? No, no, no. It was Mrs. Smith who landed this trick. Then, get that Mrs. Smith. And where did that guy land go? He went upstairs about a minute ago. Oh. I didn't feel over. Gee, I think they'd like it. Oh, yeah, just land the land. Hey, Brownie, go get Rita Ross's understudy right away. What's wrong she with her? She can't finish the show. Go and get her, will you? Go. I'm sorry, Mr. Elwain. Mm -hmm. I got enough worries without go away. <laughs> oh, it's, it's you. Are you looking for something, Mr. Lander? Are you looking for someone? Yes, where's Lander? I don't know. Uh, are you sure there's nothing I can do for you, Mr. Lander? Something maybe you'd like to know? That's nice of you, Norma. Something maybe about Vienna? Norma, you know? Yeah, I know. You know the letters he got from the Viennese police? Yeah. Well, then tell me, did she answer that letter? Yeah, tonight, after she talked to you. Then it's, then it's all too late. No, it isn't. She thinks it's in the mail. Norma, I owe you everything for that. On here? Why, nothing. What's this you're burning? Oh, that, uh, oh, and no doubt I was going to leave for Rita. Well, she'll be here in a moment. Oh, she will, will she? Yes, uh, she's got to change. Oh, well, she ain't gonna be here. And the next change will be in a wooden kimono. What do you mean? Oh, you're putting on a good act, Lander. She's dead. Dead? Yeah, and you know it. But how should I know it? I. You don't think I... I did think. But since catching you here, I'm past thinking. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Elliot. I've been looking all over for you. Where'd you find that? I found it, back of that flat. Oh, somebody threw it there. Lander was standing, he could have tossed it. Mrs. Smith, maybe Boothby. Listen, don't say anything to anybody about this here. Go on, but won't I get in don't trouble? Don't say a but... word. Shut up. Oh, Mr. Ellery! Oh, what are you? Not now, not now. Oh! <laughs> but ain't you gonna turn it over to the copper, Mr. Ellery? I'll find out who it belongs to. It's a cinch it ain't Landers. It might be Mrs. Smith's, it might be Boothby's. But anyway, I ain't gonna give it to that big flat foot till I, well, till the show's over anyway. But he'll think I'll... Listen, I mean, go away. Be... What do you bother me, please? You know, I thought you killed Rita Ruff. But I know now, he did it. Hmm. He killed Rita Ross? 
Is she dead? Very. You don't seem upset much, do you? Oh, she deserved to be killed, but he didn't do it. Uh-oh. She deserved to be killed, eh? Oh, it's stupid to think that Eric... Uh, Mr. Uh, Lander... Eric, Eric, huh? Say, what is it between you two? Why, well, not a thing. Why, well, she just mothers everybody. Yeah? Maybe she's been mothering the private detective. It's a crime to get a sweet old lady all muddled up the way you're doing. Yeah, but it was the blade from that sweet old lady's scissors that missed that Rothstein's head. I knew Mr. Lander was in the room with me. I knew you, sweet old lady. Just where were you when the blade from those scissors was thrown? Why, anybody could have thrown that scissors blade. Sure, anybody could have thrown them. Now, look here. You had a row with the private detective, and Ross overheard you. The blade from your scissors was thrown at the dame. I don't think she did. Now, shut up, will you? Now, the Ross dame says she would spill something about you that would send you to the chair. And then the Ross dame gets killed. Why don't you take me downtown and leave her alone? No, laddie, I ain't going to take you downtown. But you've been of great help to me. Now, go on. Go out and roll your hoop. Right now, this old lady's my meat. Oh, are you? Oh, please, Eric, go! Ben, take this Prince Charming outside, will you? Come on. Come on. Get out. I'll have plenty to say to you later. Mr. Under, your number is on right away. I see him in the lawn. What's up? Go on, Ann, Exit. This doesn't affect you. It affects me if it affects Eric. Go on, Jack. She knows everything, though. No. What is it? Well, listen, about Rita. Did you? Of course he didn't. Did you bring a gun in here tonight? A gun? Suddenly not. You tell me the truth? Well, of course I am, Jack. Okay, then we'll find out who did it. In the meantime, get on that and do your number. Oh, you kid. Hurry, darling. Hurry up. I'll be in time, don't you? Delight to be given the right to be carefree and gay once again. No longer slinking, respectable drinking, like civilized ladies and men. No longer need we men a charming scene like this. Some secluded rendezvous That overlooks the avenue With someone sharing a delightful chat Of this and that And cocktails for two As we enjoy a cigarette some exquisite chansonnet Two hands are sure to slyly meet beneath a serviette with cocktails for two My head may go reeling but my heart will be obedient with intoxicating kisses as the principal ingredient Most any afternoon at five We'll be so glad we're both alive Then maybe fortune will complete her plan That all began with cocktails
out in the bank. It looks like a small caliber gun. Small caliber gun, eh? Why are you so anxious to keep Lander out of this? Had he anything to do with this mysterious business you killed Linda for? Oh, Judas H. Priest. Now, I suppose she did it. It's a good thing General Grant's got an alibi. Yes, I suppose you know she didn't, huh? Sure I know. You know. Why, she just confessed. Confessed? Yeah, why, well, sure. I knew she or Lana did it. So I played them up against each other. Oh. Yeah. You killed Rita? <laughs> you knew. Smart Broadway guy. Tom, so how'd you kill her? What does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't. Look, and we've no time for you now, Jack. Just enjoy one thing. Tell me something. You stabbed Rita with one half of that scissors blade, didn't you? Is that what Dr. Sanders says? Quiet, quiet. Well, that cinches it. Answer me, Mr. Smith. You killed Rita with that scissors blade, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes! Yeah. Uh-huh. What does that add up to? Well, it just adds up to a war shout mounted head. Yeah. Dr. Saunders in there has just found that Rita was shot with a small caliber revolver. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding? Why should I kid you? Well, I suppose you're going to lock up Mrs. Smith here, huh? Because she stabbed Rita with a 32 revolver at 16 paces. Uh, hey, go and rip some panties on your cuties out there. <laughs> <laughs> Wise guy. You always think of Smith and Landon, you know. What about this guy Boothby out here? No, no. Anybody with half an eye can see that he's no, not on the old day. No. Yes, he yes. was handling that phony machine gun. All right, he might have been handling something else at the same time, huh? Uh. Ben? <laughs> Go and bring Boothby here. Okay. <laughs> You're killing me. Oh, say, I, uh... Found something out there that might interest a good smart detective. Of course, there's no use my taking it up with you. What is it? Well, here, Mountain Head, I picked it up on the stage. Can you make it out? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thanks. Slander's gun. What? That's what the Bureau says. Permit issued to Eric Lander, actor, 54 West 54th Street. I knew it. Come on, Ben. Where's Lander? He's not making a change. Well, how can I help when I don't know a thing? Oh, every man for himself, so that's it, huh? I'm sorry, Jack, but there it is. Oh, gee, I won't tell less than I'm only... Hey, what are you doing here? Nothing. Hey. Where's that gun of yours? I don't know anything about that gun. Oh, yes, you do. No, I don't. Somebody stole it out of my apartment. Why don't you try something new? Didn't you steal it yourself and bring it down here to bump off Rita Ross? It was stolen, that's all I know. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Give me that paper. Whose handwriting is this? Oh, it's no use, Bill. I, I've been trying. He, he won't talk to me after the show. All right, Mr. Henry. He won't talk, but you will. Now, come on, kick in. You know something. Oh, it'll mostly be over your head. Ah, quit your stalling. Now, where's that gun? Did he tell you where it was? Or have you got it? Search me. Well, that's an idea. Come on, Ben. Oh, take it easy, will you? Huh. I got you. I thought I recognized your handwriting. So my old pal holds out murder evidence. Sorry, Jack, but this puts the finger on you. Now, where's that gun? No. Gonna be tough, are you? No, I ain't gonna be tough, and I'll play ball with you. This show's got eight minutes to run, see? Now, if you want that gun, you're gonna let me finish my show, or don't you want to do that? I don't do no trading in murder cases. Yeah, maybe you won't have a case if you take Lander along with you. If you haven't got that gun, well, you got no evidence. Don't you understand that? And that'll just leave you a copper with a remarkable dumbness. Hey, you got a big house here, Jack, tonight. But there's a bigger house up the river. Yeah, I know that. And if I flop with this show, I just as well go up there and stay there, you understand, for the rest of my life. And let me tell you something. If you want that gun, you're gonna wait eight minutes, see? And that's flat and final. All right, I'll let you finish the show. Uh, now you're talking. Wait a minute. Stick them out. 
Oh, Bill, you can't do that. Come on, stick him out. In case you try to make a getaway. That's a lovely, dirty trick. Yeah, you did me a dirty trick, too. And you'll be lucky if you don't go down for a long stretch. While your boyfriend's sitting it out on the hot seat. Mr. Land of the Finale's Oh, Well, how can I sing? You're going to want to do the best you can. Do it for me, will you? Roy, can't you find Mr. Lander? I'll try, Mr. Lander. Nothing, dear. Nothing at all. Put your hands over, please. That's us. Show's a big success. Yeah. Sorry you stuck your nose in it, fella. But I gotta do my duty, you know. Oh, that's okay, pal. Here's you've been such a nice boy, well, I'm gonna give you that gun. Here. Hey. Where'd you have it parked? Come on, buddy. No! <laughs> you never found it. Well, it's a break for you. You found it again yourself. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> change my clothes. As you are, young fellow. I'm going with you. I'm afraid there isn't any room in the bus, Miss. Eric! Don't worry, darling. Everything will be all right. Come on, come on. I'm cutting in here. Come on. No. You can't take him away. No. Scram, lady, scram. But he didn't do it. Judas ate, uh, something. I've never seen so many judges and juries before in my life. I tell you, he didn't kill her. Kill her? Which her? Why, he killed two of them and played a part in the vanities in the same night. Well, that's pretty good. Now, go on, scram, lady, scram. I, I'm going to take you to a place where you can get a bit of rest. I Come saw on. it done. You saw what done? Nothing. I, I mean, Rita Ross. She's been furious all week. Her kind of Miss Ware getting the lead in the show. And when she heard Mr. Lander was going to marry Miss Ware, she just went wild. I saw her sneak out of her dressing room. At first, I thought she only wanted to queer Miss Ware's performance. And then I saw her go upstairs. 
And then I heard the lamp crash, and I knew she did it. I'm asking you what you saw. I know what you know. I suppose you saw her cut the sandbag, huh? No, I didn't know about that. But she was away from her dressing room a long time, and when she came back... It was a bottle of acid. I couldn't think what she'd be doing with it, so I followed her. There was another woman following her, too, a woman I'd never seen before. Down on the stage, Miss Ware was singing with Mr. Lander. Rita took out the acid, and that woman saw she was going to throw it down on him. Suddenly, Rita's arm flew up. I couldn't see just what happened. And then the woman fell. Mr. Lander for that. Mm. Sounds straight. Nobody knew anything about the acid. But why didn't you tell me Ritter Ross murdered her? I didn't know it then. I saw the cops carrying her into the stage manager's office, and Mr. Ellery said she'd fainted. Oh, I'd have told, all right. Rita deserved to go to the chair. She was rotten to everybody. I'm glad she's dead. Yeah. So you stabbed her with the other half of the scissors, eh? That. She threw that at herself just to make trouble for Mrs. Smith. She hated Mrs. Smith. So what? Your story sounded on the square. But now you're all mixed up. It sounds phony. Come on, Landa. I'll pick out a nice airy set. No, you what? can't take him. I thought so. You saw Rita Ross murdered. You were there. No, I... You know who shot her? Yes. Yes, I was there. I'll tell. But Mr. Lander didn't do it. He was good to her. Well, he got her into this show. And he was fine to me. Why, well, he wouldn't let her fire me lots of times, and he stood up for me when she beat me and made her stop it. Like he did tonight. She hit me right in front of everybody. I hated her like I never hated a human being before. I got her gun. I knew where she had it. I wasn't going to kill her. I was just going to make her keep her hands off me if she come at me again. And I watched her dancing and smiling. And I thought how black and mean she was inside. And then the music got wilder. Everything was whirling on the stage. She was herself then. Just a she-devil without a heart or a soul. She had no right to live. She deserved to be killed. And then I saw Mr. Boothby grab the machine gun and spray the dancers with it. I could feel every shot crashing into my brain till I didn't know what I was doing. I prayed for him to turn it on her with the bullets tearing her to pieces. And then I let her have it. I killed her. But you shot her with Lander's revolver. Mr. Lander's? Oh, no. No. It was Rita's I saw it at her house. I saw it at the theater. Wait. She must have stolen Mr. Lander's revolver. Tell me, what was she going to spill about him? Well, she... I never could find out. She'd faked up something or other, anything to break off his marriage. But it isn't going to be broken off now, is it, Mr. Lander? No, Norma. Thanks to you. So it was the gun you were trying to get back, eh, Lander? You hadn't the nerve to tell that new sweetheart of yours that Ritter Ross was running loose in your flat. Well, I hope you don't have too much explaining to do. All right, Ben, he's in the clear. And you came clean, old girl. 
And if I can give you a break, I will. And as soon as I've changed my clothes, I'm going out to find the best attorney in New York. We're coming with him. And all you have to do is tell him what you told us. Thank you very much. Oh, bless you. All right, Ben. Come on. You go ahead, honey. Everything's going to be all right. Don't worry. Well, you want me now, Bill? What do I want you for? All right. Forget about it. I'm sorry we tangled. Ah, oh, forget about it, fella. Forget about it. Try Say, Bill, tell me something. How'd you like the show, huh? Hey, do you want my honest opinion? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you big mallet-headed lame brain. What do you know about a show? You've been hanging out oh, in the police station. Oh, Mr. Ellery. Oh. Oh, dear. All right, Nancy. Now, what have you been trying to tell me? Oh, Mr. Ellery. What I wanted to tell you was that Rita Ross has been stealing things. What? Yes, Mr. Ellery. I saw her sneak into the wardrobe and steal a hat pin. Judas H. Uh, or something. There you are. Why didn't you listen to her? Why didn't you listen to her, mallet head? She wasn't talking to me. She was talking to you, brainless. Oh, what a smart dick you are. Why, take one look at the girl. You can tell she's got a clue or something. <laughs> oh, Mr. Ellery. What is it that I had? <laughs> oh, never mind, honey. You still have it. Hey, say, uh, how about a little supper, uh, you and me? <laughs> Wait a minute. Nancy's coming with me tonight. What? Yeah. And you promised me 50 days if I let the show run? Yeah, I promised you 50 days, but she's 51 on the team. <laughs> oh, you scum, you. You washed me up with Ethel, and now you bust up my night off? And, well, well, just try and ask me for a favor sometime. Yes, I'll ask you for a favor. I'll ask you for oh, a favor right up, now. Get out, out of the up, building with you're bothering me. Take that big mallet head of yours and get out of here, please. Uh -huh. Cops hanging around a the theater give it a bad name. Go away. You are beginning to smell up the place. <laughs> well, Nancy, what shall we do? Oh, Mr. Ellery. Uh-oh. Come on, let's do it. Mm -hmm.